efforts to support the Syrian opposition and to work towards greater convergence of views among both governments and the Syrians themselves on a political transition. So a lot of this sounds okay, but then we get the U.S. remains strongly committed to achieving a genuine negotiated political transition away from Bashar al-Assad. That is not the goal. This is Allen talking, right? Allen is interested in this stuff. The regime of Assad has violently suppressed what began as a peaceful protest in 2011. It's a lie. It was violent from the very word go. And the violence goes back to the 1980s. A whole room full, an auditorium full of military cadets were killed, mass murder by the Muslim Brotherhood butchers way back in the 1980s. We read on in this communique, right, the readout. Assad has proven through his brutal and repressive tactics that he has lost all legitimacy and he must go as part of a genuine political transition. No, I say the bankrupt, cretinous, incompetent State Department officials who pushed Obama into saying Assad must go or anybody who put, put this uh, in front of Obama to read, they're the ones who have to go. Their careers have to go to the chopping block, figuratively. This is not ISIS, right? They have to get the sack. How about that? It's softer. They're going to get the sack because they have imposed this idiotic line. There is no basis for getting rid of Assad. It's insane. Uh, did you learn anything from the assassination of the Diem brothers in Saigon? In uh, 1963, did you learn anything from killing Gaddafi? All these, this constant meddling. Okay, the mad dogs in striped pants are Alan's friends in the State Department. Now, let's look at another side of this. So we, we, we support the diplomatic efforts of uh, Ratney, okay? And Ratney is the man, and Alan has to go. Hi, uh, fi uh, fire Alan for ISIS. Now, however, we've done the readout, we've done the news article, and we'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. And welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Keep up with everything at toply.net, toply.net. And comes, now comes complete with the daily briefing of the Tax Wall Street Party. You want to know what to do? Get a hold of the Tax Wall Street Party daily briefing. It will tell you how to coordinate your activity with a growing mass movement around the world. Join it, join us. And the way to start doing that is get yourself a free, no obligation, no cost, no nothing, <laughs> except good quality stuff, um, a subscription, right? You get this sent to you every day in your inbox, generally comes in in the middle of the night, right? Between uh, 11 p.m. and uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, that's what you're gonna get. And it'll tell you the main thing that's happening in the world, or maybe the main one or two things. Now, an interesting article in the New York Times, Middle East, inquiry weighs whether ISIS analysis was distorted by Mark Mazzetti, M-A-Z-Z-E-T-T-I, and Matt Apuzzo, August 25th, 2015. Uh, here we are in the land of the New York Times, okay? And I said the noose is tightening, the figurative noose, around Allen. The circle is uh, getting tighter. The Pentagon's inspector general is investigating allegations that military officials have skewed intelligence assessments about the United States-led campaign in Iraq against the Islamic State to provide a more optimistic account of progress according to several officials familiar with the story. The investigation began after at least one civilian official of the Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, told the authorities he had evidence that officials of the United States Central Command, the military headquarters overseeing the American bombing campaign and other efforts against the Islamic State, were improperly reworking, reworking, massaging, if you will, we're improperly reworking the conclusions of intelligence assessments prepared for policymakers, including President Obama. These government officials said the details were not given. And let me just to give you an idea of the, uh, the extent of this stuff, uh, we can see, for example, that, uh, uh, say, the anti-war website, right, same day, 
CENTCOM skewed ISIS war intel to be more upbeat. Inspectors General informed Congress that the intel was likely reworked the perennial positivity of all public Pentagon assessments on the war against ISIS, despite major glaring losses on the ground, has been a matter of no small controversy for a while and has also successfully kept elected officials who are on the receiving end of those assessments, kept them maintaining the war strategy as it is. Well, I hope if you've been listening to this program, you can figure out what this is. The attacks on ISIS that began about one year ago, August 2014, are a phony war. They're as phony as the Western allies against Nazi Germany between September 1939 and May approximately 1940. They're a phony war. They're the essence of appeasement. And what, what does it consist of? To pretend you're fighting ISIS, but really to do nothing. And this is exactly this is what Erdogan is doing today in grand style. But the idea is these are the Allen networks. Who 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 does this, right? Who's who's pulling the strings? Allen. Allen with his military networks, or better yet, Allen and Petraeus. The Allen Petraeus faction, dare we say the Allen Petraeus breed love faction, a group of disgruntled, uh, I would say insubordinate unreliable officers who should be, they should be cashiered, cashiered as generals uh, from the U.S. service. So they've been, they've been spreading this and they say, oh, we're clobbering them. Man, are we doing a job on them? And they're doing nothing. Why? Because they want ISIS to grow. If ISIS is defeated, if ISIS really does get clobbered, as we're hoping they will be, then uh, if ISIS is, is weakened, then it won't be of any use against Iran. It won't be of any use against Russia. It won't be a good CIA secret army of the type that these characters want it to be. So they fake it. Just like, again, look at what uh, what Erdogan has been doing, right? In the past, it's, it's just about one month uh, that uh, since Erdogan made this announcement that he was going to start attacking uh, ISIS. So what has he done? We're told three or four airstrikes against ISIS compared to three to four hundred airstrikes against the main enemy of ISIS, the gallant and capable Kurdish forces. And the U.S. has let this happen. Huh? Boy, that is uh, that is horrendous. So. Um, what uh, you know, what do we know about uh about our dear friend Alan coming up uh, in this stuff. Let's see if we can find uh, some uh, some details. Um, we know that Alan has been mentioned quite prominently, actually, in the this investigation. Right, his name has been mentioned repeatedly, and especially by this uh, by this uh, Admiral Kirby. Admiral Kirby, of course, who came from the Pentagon to the State Department where he is now. So here is now a transcript uh, of the State Department. I'm sorry, the State Department briefing. Yes, State Department. On Wednesday, we had at the State Department briefing a question. Can we go back to ISIS? There was a New York Times report today that there's an inquiry weighing, trying to decide whether ISIS analysis was distorted. The focus of this piece was primarily DOD, but there are some quotes in here from General John Allen in his talk at the Aspen Forum, I believe. So Allen was hyping, we're winning. It's a great success. Don't need to do anything more. Let's just keep going. And of course, ISIS is getting stronger and stronger. And one of the other included things is that when ISIS gets really strong, then Allen is going to say, time to send the Marines, time to send the Army heavy divisions, the armored divisions, the heavy infantry, and so forth. Mr. Kirby, he goes on, though. This is Admiral Kirby. Let's talk about General Allen for a second, a retired four-star Marine combat leader in Iraq and Afghanistan. He led our NATO mission in Afghanistan before his retirement. He's absolutely the right leader to come in and pull this to coalition together and get it to where it is today. I mean, that's General Allen at work. Yeah, faking the reports. 
I've served for General Allen myself for a short time, and I can tell you, you won't find a more pragmatic, realistic, clear-eyed leader than John Allen, a more seditious, insubordinate, treacherous leader. And so when he says something like he said at Aspen, that ISIS is losing, he meant it and he believed it, and he had the facts to back it up. It doesn't mean, as I said, that there's not going to be times when ISIS or ISIL is going to achieve success. Uh, and he defends him again on Thursday. We get another thing. This time he brings it up. General Allen, I think you're referring to, his job is not to run the campaign. His job was to get a coalition formed, established, and functioning. And, and obviously he's accomplished that. Yeah, except for Turkey, who is on the side of the terrorists from ISIS. My God. Turkey has just come in recently. Turkey has come in. General Allen and Ambassador McGurk, this is his uh, his scabrous and, uh, what can we say, prurient uh, sidekick, right? Ambassador McGurk were key figures in working with that agreement with the Turkish government. But the campaign itself is being run by the Defense Department. The military side of the campaign run by the Defense Department, specifically U.S. Central Command in Tampa. Oh, Allen, time to oust him. He's been lying to the president. He's been faking the reports through his networks. This guy must go. Bad news. Can't trust him. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Topley speaking to you from uh, Washington, D.C. Now, we have more about Syria. We have more about Allen and company. But uh, we have to keep in touch with the Greek situation, which has now taken another uh, turn. And that is to say Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras of Syriza not only resigned, but has now been, uh, he has left office. He was a caretaker here for a couple of days. And now we have a new, a new prime minister, and we're going to have elections in one month. So let's go to Athens and get the lowdown from Michael Chiotinis. Michael, welcome. Tell us what's going on. Yes, and that is that is actually not a real government, of course. This is a transitional government. Uh, it's a government just put in um, place to... Uh, keep the peace while um, not not really governing until uh, until elections are held. So in English, it's a caretaker government. Caretaker it's a care, government. Yes, a caretaker transitional government with no real authority to make no decisions. So we it's it's absolutely insignificant. It's well, technically, it's the first woman prime minister of Greece, but it's totally insignificant. Um, the Michael, I would just I would just say that's all true. But yeah. uh, anytime there's an election, whoever has power during the time the election is coming on can influence it in certain subtle or not so subtle way. Yeah, of course. And uh, there are legal issues that uh, get into right. uh, this thing. But the, the woman who is now the prime minister was appointed to a high uh, to a very high uh, legal office, office of the legislature, the legis legislative uh, power, uh, by Tsipras himself. So it, it's uh, someone who Tsipras trusts. And there are many objections by the opposition, by a conservative opposition about her. But so this, this gives me some confidence about uh, keeping uh, legal things uh, all right in the meantime. Um, now, the main thing is we are heading towards elections on September 20th. Now, any polling numbers I give you are going to be unreliable mm -hmm. for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that polling is the number one means of influencing public opinion. It's money that comes into polls. We've seen this in situations like the recent referendum and in all past elections. Actually, in the referendum, we had po polls show showing um, the yes vote uh, gaining, uh, winning, but we, didn't, <laughs> we saw a <laughs> landslide, 62% right. no. Um, now, polling results are bought and paid for by mainstream media, who are controlled by the local oligarchy, and thus are favorable, favorable towards whoever they want to promote. And one way that they can promote is that 
they suddenly appear in the polls. People who never appeared, who are reserves of this system, of the power system, of the oligarchy 